Today I've got 10 new light burn tips for you that you probably didn't know, so stick around. Did you know that when you're working in a design, you can hit F12 to turn off all the side panels. This will give you a clean workspace if you're not ready to work with your cuts and layers or your laser controls yet, and give you just a nice unobstructed view of your design. And little bonus tip, if you hit Control-0 while you are in your workspace, it will resize to fit the entire page on the screen. All right, so my next tip is, did you know that you can hold the space bar and then click and drag. And this is especially useful for laptop users who may be working with trackpads that they can hold that space bar and then drag their screen around without having to rely on a middle mouse button uh, from a, uh, a mouse. So next up we have nudging. So nudging, and I'm going to roughly align these two objects. And the arrow keys, if I select an object, if I just use the arrow keys by default, left, right, up, down, they move my selected shape by five millimeter increments uh, across the screen. So if I wanna modify that, if I wanna make big jumps, I can hold the shift key and hit an arrow key, and that's gonna move me by 20 millimeters. If I wanna make smaller movements, I can hold the control key for the Windows users, um, I think it's the, it's probably going to be the command key for Mac users. I'll have to double check that. Uh, but if you hold that control key, it will only move by one millimeter incre increments. And then if you need really fine control, let me zoom in here. If you hold control and shift or command and shift at the same time, you will get 0 0.1 millimeter increments. So you can really dial in positioning by using those modifiers to get either really big or really small jumps. These jumps are also configurable in your settings under the units and grid section. So if you come in here, shape movement increments, your control, one millimeter arrow, five millimeter, shift arrow, 20 millimeter, can all be set to your preferences here. Okay, so next up we're going to look at a little node editing trick that allows us to quickly align straight lines or edges to a 45, 90, uh, or zero degree axis. So right now I've got this just random shape and you can see none of these lines truly align straight up and down or flat or even on a 45. So I'm gonna go into node editing mode and when I hover over e any of these lines, and again, they have to be straight lines, um, and use the A key, you'll see that it aligns that line to the nearest 45 degrees. So if I'm closer to zero, it's gonna align me to zero. If I'm closer to 90, it'll align me to 90. If I'm closer to 45, it's gonna align me to 45. So that's just a little trick that you can use to quickly align odd shapes and take any straight edge and align it kind of like uh, a 3D printer where maybe I want to lay this flat on the bed. So I'd hover over this and I'm gonna hit A and it's gonna align it flat. Next up, we're gonna look at mirror across line where we're going to mirror a shape across a reference line. And this reference line can be anything. It doesn't have to be straight up. It doesn't have to be vertical. It doesn't have to be anything. So it, it can just be you know, like that, as long as it's a, a straight line. And then what I can do is select my shapes that I want to mirror and then hold shift. And the last thing I want to select is the straight line. And I'm going to go to arrange and we have mirror across line or control shift M or command shift M for Mac. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a mirror of that object straight across the line. Um, so where this is kind of neat is uh, one of the reasons I wanted to show that alignment is I'm going to go in here, I'll, node al or I'll align that vertical and then I'll take this and get it somewhere close and then align it vertical and then I want to drop it right there and then when I select that, select my line and arrange mirror across line. I now have a duplicate of the shape reflected across that reference line. 
This shortcuts the need to duplicate the shape and then mirror it and realign it and does it all in one step. Next up, let's look at another node trick, which is break apart. So I'm going to use the new nifty little star shape in Lightburn. And right now this is just a, a primitive shape. Um, but what I can actually do is I can come up to a range and I can break apart or just hit Alt B. And what that'll do is not only will it convert it to a, a path with nodes that I can edit, but it'll actually break it into its individual components. So you can see now I can come through and break these apart. And if I look at that in node editing, you'll see that it, um, it, it actually you know created me all these individual lines instead of one solid shape. And then if I wanted to rejoin all this, let's say I wanted to pull this out for some reason and rejoin all this, I could just simply select all that, hit Alt J um, and rejoin my nodes. And now I'm back to a single solid shape. So break apart's a fun one if you really just need to um, you know, manipulate uh, a shape in some way, shape or form and pull out little bits and pieces of it as, as necessary. All right, so next up I wanna take a look at uh, some snapping tricks. And let me duplicate this. And I actually just found this out from Jason uh, recently. Um, while it was in the documentation, unfortunately it wasn't clear to me how this worked. And I was trying to align so that this point aligned to this inside angle here. And I was trying everything. I was moving it, I was holding Alt and it wouldn't snap. Um, I just couldn't get it to snap right to that point. And what Jason pointed out is that you can actually move from other points of the shape. And if you watch your cursor, um, so here you see there is a midpoint, it changed, there's just a line. Um, but for me, it was that right there that tells me that I've got my corner. And so I can move by the corner and not move just, you know, randomly try to position. So what happens then is if I move by this corner piece and now if I hit alt or hold alt, my snapping um, gets a whole lot more accurate. I mean, I can do it without alt and you'll see that that cursor will change to show me that I'm over that node right there in the corner. And then if I hold alt, same thing, it's just a little bit more snappy, if you will. And that's it. So that snapped exactly where I want. So what I couldn't, what I couldn't do by just moving things around like this is accomplished simply by grabbing it from the corner once my cursor changes and then snapping that to the next available corner. So that got me that. And the reason I wanted that is because I was also trying to do a two point uh, rotation. Uh, so if I select this and I'm going to do control two or um, two point rotate and scale. And then I want to select that corner. And then I want to select and drag from this corner and drop that right there. And so that just gave me an alignment of the two stars uh, just as playing around. It was something I wanted to do. I wanted to see if I could figure out how to do it. And uh, yeah, so that's, um, you know, that's different ways or, or a more accurate way to snap uh, by dragging from particular points. And you'll see same thing if I kind of hover until it gives me my midpoint and I drag that, I can snap my midpoint to various locations uh, by the midpoint. Whereas if I just grab it from here and hold, whether I hold alt or not, there's no snapping until I get the entire shape there. So it's a little bit more granular capability in your snapping. Uh, and thank you to Jason for pointing that one out to me the other day. The next tip is in the trace window. So if I've got this entire image and let's say I only want to trace the light burn logo itself. If I go into alt T, I can actually draw a bounding box around what I want to trace and it will only trace that part of the image. So again, to show that I select the image, alt T. If I wanted just the light burn name, I could draw a bounding box around that. And when I hit okay, 
it's going to give me only what I drew around. So just a, a neat little tip to, you know, pick and choose parts of an image that you want to trace without having to break the entire image apart. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at is relevant to anyone who, uh, whether through an upgrade or a machine move or whatever, um, feels like their, when their, their light burn is not... Um, something's changed, something's off, something's in the wrong place, uh, your preferences are not what you remember them being. Light Burn has a way for you to go into the file window, preferences, and load prefs back up. And what that does is every time that, you know, I make a change, it saves those preferences. So what I can do is I can actually roll back to a point in time where it was exactly the way I want it to be, no matter what I did. And so as I go through here, um, you know, you'll see that somewhere along the lines, if you look at my device list, um, where'd it go? I don't know, somewhere in there, boom, all of a sudden there's a new device in there that I had added. So, um, you know, you can roll back pretty far and pull back old preferences. Uh, and basically just reapply them to light burn to get you right back where you wanted to be. So there's 10 tips that hopefully you didn't know 10 minutes ago that will help you out in your light burn journey. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe to the Tinkerverse and uh, stick around for future reviews and tutorials. Until next time, guys. Thanks.